Now, if you've ever tried to rotate something in 3D and then all of a sudden things just don't go as you expected, chances are you've probably run into gimbal lock. I'll just show you what I mean. So here I'm just going to scrub my timeline. My little plane is flying around the scene looking really good. But when I get over to here, it's got some crazy animation going on. So what is going on in this weird bit here? Well, this is what's called gimbal lock. And it's one of the problems with Euler rotations, which is how most software calculates orientations inside 3D. In this video, I'd like to explain how Euler rotations work in Blender and what this gimbal lock thing is. And I'll also explain all the different Euler rotation orders. Plus, I'll give you a guide to hopefully help you avoid gimbal lock in some situations. Basically, this video is about how Euler rotations work and the problems you will come across. And the next video will be about how to fix those problems. Okay, first, let's go over some basics. Why is it called Euler and not Euler? Well, that's simple. That's because these rotations are actually named after a person. They're named after the Swiss mathematician, Leonhard Euler. And because his name is pronounced Euler, you pronounce these rotations in the same way. Next, what the hell is a gimbal? Well, a gimbal is this thing. You've probably seen one of these. These type of things are used in many situations, from steadicams, robotics, spaceships, gyroscopes, and other toys, and many different things. Now, Euler rotations work in the same way, where they're connected or parented like this. That's the way that the coordinate system works. Now I've just gone ahead and built a simple gimbal situation that represents this XYZ Euler. Now there are different types of um, rotation orders, as you can see here in our, in our little menu. I'll get to those later. But for now, all you need to know is that the Euler rotations work in hierarchy, where X is a child of the Y, and then Y is a child of Z. So you can think about it as being written backwards. XYZ, Z is the master, Y is the middle, and then X is the child of them all. So in this system here, when I move the X ring, just our monkey head follows along. If I grab the Y axis here, you can see that the Y axis and the X axis move along. If I grab the blue axis, that is moving a whole hierarchy. This would be an XYZ Euler setup. Now it doesn't matter whatever rotation mode that you're in, you will always get gimbal lock when the middle axis, in this case the Y, hits 90 degrees. So if we rotate this one around to positive or negative 90 degrees, you'll see that these two rings line up. The Euler rotations lose the ability to rotate cleanly around this missing axis down here. To rotate around that axis, then you actually need to rotate around all three axes at once, which gives rise to weird orientations during that transformation. Now we don't actually need this big gimbal setup to show us what's going on with our axes. We can actually use the manipulator to do this. So I'm just going to turn all that off and turn my manipulator on. Here we go. Now you've probably used this manipulator before. It's a handy way to um, rotate your monkey and point it in the direction that you want. Now you probably notice that these axes always stay perfectly spaced from each other. And that is because of our orientation mode up here. Now most people will probably use the global, local, or the normal rotation modes. Now it's important to note that this doesn't accurately represent what's happening with our axes under the hood. To do that, we can tell our manipulator to display in gimbal mode. And this is going to show you exactly what's happening with the mathematics. Now you can see that my red and my blue are getting closer to each other. And as I've already said, if the Y, the middle axis, gets close to 90 or negative 90, you'll see that they match up. So we've gotten ourselves into gimbal lock again. Now what does this actually mean? Well, it means that if I rotate on the X axis, you can see that our monkey is kind of nodding to the side. And if I rotate on our Z axis, it's going exactly the same direction. This means we've got no clean way of rotating around this third axis here to make the monkey spin around this way. Now so far, I've only demonstrated the default XYZ Euler rotation order. So what about some of the other rotation orders? So here you can see XYZ. I'm just going to change this one to YZX. Now what does this change actually mean? Well, as you've already learned, the way that's written, that would be YZX, is always backwards. So that means that the X axis is the master, the Z axis is the child of that, and then the Y axis is a child by itself. Let's put it into the same position where we got a little bit of gimbal lock happening before, which was positive or negative 90. So I'm just going to change this one to be positive 90, and you can see that my axes are still perfectly spaced. So if I needed to have the monkey's head spin around on that axis, I still have the X axis that I can do that with. Does this mean that I've changed the rotation order and gotten rid of gimbal lock? No, it just means that I've moved it to a different location. Now remember when I said it's always the middle axis that when it gets to positive or negative 90, you get gimbal lock. In this order, the middle axis is Z. 
Let's just change the z-axis to positive 90, and then you can see that the other two axes are lining up. We actually have no clean way to rotate around this direction here. Ah, we've got gimbal lock again. Now you might be tempted to just jump into local rotations and then grab it here, but I want you to watch what's happening with our all our axes up here. When I grab this and move it, you can see that they're flipped. This was zero and now it's negative 90 and this one's flipped to almost zero and then this one's spinning around. So crazy things have to happen with Euler rotations when you hit gimbal lock for it to be able to achieve the orientations that you want. So this here is why rotating things in 3D can sometimes be much more difficult than you first expected. Now, if you're going to use Euler rotations, there's just no way around gimbal lock. But if you choose a smart rotation order, you can change where this gimbal lock happens and possibly avoid it in some cases. I'm just going to say some cases. So what I'd like to do now is give you a little bit of a guide to help you choose the best rotation order for your situation. I'm not going to represent our axes as X, Y, Z just for now. I'm just going to say A, B, C. And we'll figure out the best options when we apply it to our situation in a moment. So what have we learned? We have learned that it is always written backwards. That is where the C here is the master or the, the, the parent of all the other two axes. Now, gimbal lock will always occur when the middle axis reaches positive or negative 90 or a multiple of 90 or negative 90. Position C here. This is your most important axis. Whatever you put here is going to drag the other two axes along with it and they're going to be evenly spaced. So I'm going to call this the primary axis. And this is where you should start thinking about what axis do you want to drag the other ones along? This is your primary axis. Now A here is your second most important axis. If you need to animate this axis and it will approach 90, then it's best to put it in this position. At the middle position, B, this is your least important axis to be animated, but it is the most important one to get in the right spot. So ideally, if you don't need to animate an axis, put it in the middle here. But if you do need to animate it, make sure that you try and choose one that's not going to approach positive or negative 90. Now, as I said, this is not possible in some cases. But let's refer over to our monkey head example. All right, so here's our monkey head example. And we know, or I know, and you're about to know, that I want it to rotate 90 degrees to the right, green right, that is, and then rotate around on this axis. But if I choose the default X, Y, Z, then I have no axis to do that. So I need to choose one of the other ones. So I'm going to reset it and think about this. So what axis is going to be my primary axis? I'm going to drag it around to the right and I want the other two to follow along with it. That would be this green axis here or the Y. So I'm going to choose an option that has Y at the end because that is our primary axis. I'm going to choose this one here. This is not the one that I'm going to end up with. But I'm going to choose this option and then we're going to rotate it around 90 degrees. And then my second most important axis is the one that's going to rotate around in this direction. Now in this order, X, Z, Y, this Z axis is in the middle. So if I actually do want to rotate around 90 degrees, then this is going to be a problem because I, I still hit gimbal lock. So I'm going to undo that. And then I can choose one of the other options where Y is at the end, our primary axis, and Z is not in the middle. That is this one here, Z, X, Y. Now when we rotate this one, let's go 90 degrees again you notice that they're still all evenly spaced. So if I wanted to rotate my monkey head to the side and then spin around like this for whatever strange reason, I know that Z, X, Y is an excellent option to do this. So think about your primary axis first and then trying to avoid that dreaded 90 degrees in the middle will help you out in many situations. Now there's just a couple of caveats to all this rotation order stuff. It's always a great thing to know what your monkey head is going to do before you start animating it. But most of the time, you don't actually know this. So if you run into gimbal lock when you've already got existing animation on your monkey head or whatever object that you are animating, then you simply just can't change the rotation order and expect everything to work out. This is going to change the result that you get because the hierarchy of these axes are working differently. And this changes the order in which they're solved. It's kind of like telling someone to walk forward and then turn right or turn right and then walk forward. The order of those operations really matter. Otherwise, you get a different result. All right, just to demonstrate this further, here's a bunch of planes. They're all doing the same thing, and they're all starting out with the default orientation order, which is X, Y, Z. Then I'm just going to go ahead and change the rotation orders, keeping the animation exactly the same without converting any of this data. Do you see how the result is very different? 
some of them are just pointing in the wrong direction. So if you need to change the rotation order when you've already got existing animation on there, you'll need to convert that data. This is possible to do, but I'll show you in a separate video how to do this. Instead, I'm just going to skip ahead and show you the result of converting all this data and keeping the same orientations. Da -da -da -da. They are all still pointing generally in the, in the same direction, although you'll notice that they've got gimbal lock in different places. Which brings me to my main caveat when dealing with Euler rotations. Sometimes it's just not possible to avoid gimbal lock, no matter what you do, especially when you're animating something on all three axes in world space like this. So as the animator, you need to decide on how you want to handle it. You can brute force it, that would be hand keying all the frames to force the orientation to be exactly what you want, not recommended. You can use an empty or a helper object to complete your rotation and then bake it back to the original object. You could switch to Quaternion rotation mode, which doesn't suffer from gimbal lock. However, there's an added layer of complexity that comes along with Quaternions. You can convert your animation to Quaternions, add a couple keyframes where you've got the gimbal lock issues, and then convert it back so you're nice and safe and comfortable working back in Eulers again. This is similar to the baking method, but we're using some different tools to achieve that result. Now, all of these options will be discussed in the next video. But this is the end of this video. Hopefully I've given you a better understanding of Euler rotations in Blender and why they don't behave the way that you expect sometimes. Thanks for watching.